Hi everybody, I'm Lawrence, the producer of Surviving Vegas, a buck at a time. Um, today I want to do a couple things. I want to go over the uh, some of the tech specs. Uh, there's always some interest in how things were shot, what they were shot with, uh, audio recording, the editing, that kind of thing. Um, the other thing I wanted to go over was a little bit of our background. Uh, my wife Kim and I do these projects. We like doing this stuff. I just want to kind of give you a little bit of history rundown of, uh, of who we are and, and kind of what we're trying to accomplish here. Uh, first, though, I want to just thank everybody who's watching and subscribing. We're going to hit 100 subscribers soon here, and uh, we're up to almost 20,000 uh, channel views, which is awesome. That's in about a month uh, to five weeks that we've gotten to that point. It's awesome. What, what we're really trying to do is get uh, get the viewership up, get the minutes watched up, uh, get a shot at trying to get this thing picked up as a reality series for TV. We're very, very appreciative of everybody uh, tuning in. Hope you're enjoying the show. Please, as always, if, if there's anything you want to talk about, uh, you want us to talk about, want us to talk to the characters about, uh, just feel free to let us know. Um, you know, contact us via YouTube, email, uh, however you want to do it. But uh, you know, we're here to try to have a great show that you guys enjoy watching. So, so thank you for tuning in. Keep keep it up. Spread the word. Try to get a get this thing on the TV. So, um, let me give you a, uh, just a real quick rundown on on who we are. Uh, my wife Kim and I have been doing this for 10 years now, 12 years. Uh, this is our fourth project. We had a bit of a break in there. We used to live in California. Uh, we moved out here to Las Vegas uh, four years ago and kind of got the bug to get going on projects again. Um, we did three documentaries. Well, this is our third documentary. We did a, uh, our very first project was uh, something called The Layover. Uh, it was a narrative piece that we wrote. It was uh, okay. It, it had some, some bright spots and also had some dark spots, and that's about all we're going to say about The Layover. Um, the, uh, the next project that we did was Brave in the Attempt. We're really proud of that one. That one actually we got onto uh, the documentary channel for, played for two years on that before they went defunct. Um, that was a documentary where, feature length, where we followed uh, a Special Olympics basketball team in their quest for gold. So we kind of got to know all the characters on the, on the team, uh, went into their private lives, and uh, kind of what it takes to make a winning basketball team. Uh, from that, we got commissioned to do a project called Many Faces, One Community. Uh, that was uh, looking at the civil rights struggle in the Southwest. Uh, that was really interesting. Uh, one of the most memorable things I can think of from that is we went to the uh, Japanese internment camps on the border of California, Arizona, uh, Nevada, and uh, just kind of got to tour through some of those and shoot through, through the ruins of some of that, and that was really moving and, and quite interesting. Um, you can find our work at uh, www.area51filmgroup.com. Uh, we've got some trailers up of some of the past things that we did there. So uh, check that out if you're interested and uh, you kind of get a little bit of a glimpse of who we are and kind of what we're trying to do. Um, with this project specifically, uh, you know, we, we started with it as a documentary. We actually cut a 65-minute documentary. We kind of got the idea here to, to cut this into a, a show to try to do a reality show with it. We think the characters are quite interesting and there's a really rich tapestry of characters down there um, on Fremont and at certain points in the strip you'll find all kinds of people doing all kinds of different characters down there. And, uh, you know, we started out with just trying to answer the question, who are these people, who would do this, and what's their life like? In a big picture, we really would like to put the real in reality. Uh, so much of reality TV now is uh, formulaic, it's staged, uh, it's structured so that they know what kind of show they're going to have every week. Uh, we're documentary makers, we, we love documentaries. It might be a little more challenging, but uh, I think the payoff is that the, you get a real sense of the world that you're delving into. Um, and I think that's what we, I mean, I know that's what we tried to do here. I think that's what we accomplished with this show. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's what we're trying to do. That's, that's why we're at this. And uh, I think the public, I know myself, but I think the public a lot is uh, getting tired of the staged uh, fake reality shows that are out there. So um, let's get into the equipment here. Uh, we tr uh, originally, we, when we first started getting back into projects, we were going to be shooting um, shorts, uh, narrative shorts. So we've got a number of scripted projects we, you know, we've also done over the years that we're, we're interested in trying to get shot. So uh, the equipment that we bought was sort of centered around that, not as much uh, the running and gunning documentary style shooting. Uh, so that's kind of why we ended up with the equip equipment that we did, plus the uh, cost factor. We were trying to do this on a very small budget. Uh, total for all of the gear, I think we paid about 2500 bucks for everything, uh, give or take. Uh, Camera-wise, this is the camera we've used. It's the uh, Canon 650D uh, Rebel T4i. It's a uh, it's a great little camera. Um, it came with an 18 by 55 millimeter lens and 
the what is this one? This is our wide or our zoom uh, 75 by 300 millimeter. Um, this one we used primarily for you know just your basic generic flat shots. Uh, so it's a good focal length. You know you can you can be up close, you can be far away a little bit, and still kind of get a good wide angle, just a general basic shot. Uh, this guy we used uh, a lot of times we would mic up the characters and we would stand across the alleyway or you know far away we could zoom in and nobody even knew we were shooting um, that proved to be really beneficial at times because at some point they kind of forget that they're mic'd up and they forget there's a camera and uh, you get a little more natural uh, you know dialogue happening at first when you do this with people they're they're very hesitant especially these these folks a lot of them are very uh, very gun shy very uh, wary of people so uh, you know that's that's kind of it takes a while to get them comfortable and then also if you're not even in the in their line of sight they relax a lot more and they forget about the mics come um, so that's pretty much the the video side of it uh, I do want to show you this I'm gonna the lighting's gonna be crappy here for a sec but uh, these are, are cool little I think these things were like 15 bucks uh, they're 40 LED panels uh, they even came with their own little uh, plastic hard plastic gels that you could change the colors uh, the color temperature so this is you know like a little more of a of a pink gets you a little more of a flesh tone kind of thing. Uh, the, oh, that's another factor too. Those are battery operated. Of course, the camera's battery battery operated. Everything that we did, we did not tie into any power or anything. And there were only two of us shooting. It was my wife and I shooting uh, and recording the audio for everything. So uh, we wanted to be completely self-contained. We basically had the uh, had the camera, uh, a boom mic. I'll show you some of that stuff here in a sec. Uh, everything was battery powered and self-contained, uh, wireless uh, except for the boom mic. Everything else was wireless, so uh, I'll talk about the difficulties of that on a busy place like Fremont Street as well. Um, so let's get to the audio gear. Uh, we used this really crappy, <laughs> again budget. Uh, this is a little two-channel Nady uh, wireless mic uh, receiver and a transmitter. Here we've got the uh, got the little wireless uh, lav mic packs uh, there was a channel A and a channel B and those uh, this isn't typically battery operated but uh, I put together this little box here so that uh, it would plug into the Nady here and ran all on double A's and uh, then you could just wire up your mic and uh, the only downside of this this thing was, was super cheap this thing was like 50 bucks uh, for two channel wireless mic uh, the quality is what you would expect for 50 bucks for wireless mics but uh, where the voice timbre range is um, they worked really well actually I mean they captured uh, you know audio okay for the voice range uh, they you know a better mic would probably do a better job of rolling off some of the noises we didn't want so some of it's a little noisy Fremont's pretty tough to shoot on um, there's a guy down there that plays a soprano sax all the time uh, you hear him everywhere. Uh, there's also a lot of crowd noise that, uh, depending on where that sits in the in the range, in the you know in the uh, frequency range spectrum, uh, that can be difficult to edit out. So, so some of the post on this was a little bit challenging. Uh, the other downside of having a two channel is both characters were, were running into one channel, back into one channel on the recorder. So at times you have some some voice bleed between the two of them that you just couldn't do anything about. So if I did that again, I would get two different. I'd, I'd spend the extra fifty bucks and get a second uh, unit, and we'd run into two different channels. I'm cheap. What can I say? Um, for recording, we used this little task cam. This guy was great. Little uh, task cam. Uh, is that a Porta Four? I think it's a uh, yeah. Oh, DP 004. Little uh, four channel digital audio recorder. Uh, it's got two inputs. Um, we, we were using XLR mics, so you had to have a, a quarter inch XLR adapter. Um, they ran straight out of the wireless uh, Nady into here. Uh, you have pretty good controls over it. Uh, this thing would record, again, it's all battery operated, so that was the big deal for us. Everything had to be battery operated. Um, and, you know, it did okay for, for vocal range stuff. I'm, I'm not unhappy with it. Um, as far as the uh, editing goes, uh, we're using Cyberlink, makes this program called Power Director. Um, it's okay. It's a prosumer level, I would say. I'm not real happy with some of the things it does. It was only about 250 bucks, which is pretty cheap. Uh, we were looking at Sony Vegas, but that was uh, 500, 700, 700 bucks for the Sony Vegas. So it's a $500 savings, and again, I'm cheap. Um, 
it worked okay. It, it allows you to do as many channels. I mean, we probably had, on most of the video, we had four video channels, layers, and then we had, uh, gosh, maybe ten audio layers. And it lets you play all that back in real time. Part of that's the Sony Vio. It's a, it's a super fast, I think we're a, a i7 chip, uh, super fast computer. Um, it renders video in about two minutes to one minute real time uh, at full HD, full 48, uh, 48K audio. It's, it's, I'm very happy with the computer. Um, the, uh, the program, though, the downside of this, I would say, is that the way you open and manage projects, it's really cumbersome. Um, it would be better to, I would have spent the money next time on Sony Vegas. Um, so that's pretty much the gear we used, and uh, the two of us went out. Um, we got permits for everything. We had to carry insurance to get th uh, permits for the city and the county. Uh, everything we did, we've got releases on everything. So we were above board the whole time, um, and so that we could have total clearance for this thing and not have to worry about you know issues in the back end. So I guess in uh, conclusion, I just want to say thanks for watching. Uh, again, uh, the subscriptions, the, the views, the minutes viewed, it's awesome. We're, we're building something here. I really feel like the momentum's starting to build. Um, this week, we've got a cool episode coming out uh, where Samantha, we, we meet her child, meet uh, some of her family. Uh, so that's kind of cool. You know, we get to go into their lives a little more. Uh, we're kind of getting past the introductions and introduction to the world. Now you get to see more about how the world works and what these guys do every day. So, so keep tuning in. Uh, we've got some really cool episodes coming up in the next few weeks, and uh, I think you're going to like it. Thanks very much.